I would very much like to welcome to the stage Linda Yaccarino, the Chair of, of Advertising and Partnerships at NBC Universal. Linda oversees $10 billion in the kind of revenue that we were just talking about with Rich. Um, and I'm very much look, looking forward to getting into this with you, Linda. So welcome to the Signal stage. Thank you so much for having me. As a audience member for several years, it is truly a great honor and opportunity to be a guest today. Well, it's a little different. We get to see you know, I, I I don't know if that's your home or your office, but you got some nice curtains there, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> it's the now everyday combo of home and office. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh, well, this is my home office, but uh, but uh, Proctor Gavel made sure that I had something behind me that was a little appropriate to the job of hosting this thing. Let's get into uh, into a conversation about both your role, your company, and the industry more broadly. You oversee a very broad spectrum of, of partnerships, of revenue streams. Um, you know, tell me what has been the most, uh, you know, the biggest opportunity and the biggest challenge of, of your role. Certainly. Well, I think I should give a little context first for those of us, those people who are joining us that might not have the full knowledge or breadth of the company that that we get such uh, an opportunity and I get uh, the great good fortune of, of sitting on a perch that oversees all aspects of our brands, of our company. So our company is um, Comcast, NBC Universal, and Sky. So while we are the largest domestic uh, media company in the US, now we are, you know, on our path to, to going global with Sky. And if you think about it, um, the breadth, as you put it, of our company really do, does give us a great insight across every media platform. So whether it is linear television that Rich spoke so lovingly about a few minutes ago, or to digital properties are now streaming uh, broadcast, English language, Spanish language, cable, sports, entertainment. There's such a huge diversity of brands, therefore a huge diversity of knowledge and access in two really specific areas, right? It's we have an incredible purview of how consumers want to interact with us and then therefore we're able to talk to marketers like a, one of our biggest partners, Proctor, about how they want to or should be maximizing doing business with us. So we have an incredible purview of knowledge and data in that relationship because we know how consumers interact with us. But specific to, to our relationship with Proctor, it's exciting. We've had a long, long and and fantastic and storied history with Proctor. And just for NBC Universal, we've been in business for almost 90 years, right? So we have such what I think was um, what people shied away from before referencing the legacy media companies that it's now turned into be great good fortune because there's a commonality of values, Proctor, Comcast, NBC Universal. And it it's what Mark mentioned in his opening comments, right? So we talked about safety. Right. So safety now has taken uh, a twofold meeting safety for your employees and consumers, but brand safety and then growth and, and focus on on uh, mobilizing for good. And I know we'll talk about that. Um, but I think the biggest challenge we that exists today is is exactly what Rich talked about a little bit, which is the collision between media and tech and Comcast NBC Universal is literally at the epicenter of that and the the challenge really is and and I could speak personally of my own personal frustration is the the ability to get the industry to move forward and leave the legacy practices behind and stay current or catch up to the consumer that everyone you've had speaking this morning is to talking so specifically about so thrilled to be working with Proctor on moving the industry forward and they need more of a nudge so yeah, Mark's well, been a great partner you have definitely been giving those nudges, and I want to talk about a couple of them. Before we do, though, my guess is many folks out there are paying attention to the news that may have come out in 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 your case just yesterday. Um, there's been a build up to it, but it was a milestone. Peacock launched. Um, so 
Tell us, how is Peacock different from other streaming services and what are your expectations and hopes for it? Well, today is actually Peacock's national birthday. So it's perfect, perfect, perfectly timed to be speaking to you today. And again, I'll I'll reference um I'll reference the 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 comment by Rich about the collision between media and um tech and data. The, I would just give a little more context to it because Peacock is really uh, uh, elevating or changing the game in streaming because of the heightened premium content that Peacock has to deliver. So imagine combining content and data and distribution at scale and redefining the viewing experience for consumer. So the biggest single differentiator for Peacock versus everything else, it's free. And doesn't free sound pretty good right now to a consumer? You know, I was I, I was listening to one of the, the content breaks that you were talking about of one of your executives from Italy and talking about, about being Proctor being the benefactor to consumers when they need it now so importantly. And that's what is at the core of what Peacock is great value in exchange for a completely new future of advertising. So everything that we're talking about, less of a disruption, making our marketing partners the benefactor to consumers, making shoppable experiences part of the everyday game for Peacock, and really most importantly, embedding advertising partnerships, branded experience as part of the consumer experience for Peacock. So I think the future that both Rich and Mark were talking about, and I know you can't put a date on transformation, but certainly the transformation of the future of advertising is today, July 15th with the birth of Peacock. Yeah, I got, I got the date off by one. I don't know how, I seem to be always living in the next day, especially so when we're in the middle of the you're always ahead of the game and one step ahead of everyone else. So it makes complete <laughs> sense. <laughs> At least one day. Uh, well, happy birthday for Peacock. It is a new model. Um, and my guess is you you have a company that is so uh, distinct and so many different elements that, you know, this kind of change is not easy. Uh, there will be people even within your own company who will fight it. Um, and, you know, have you found that the ability to make that kind of change has accelerated um, during the last four or five months when just everything has been put into such relief? You are exactly right that Peacock has challenged the legacy of the entire business, but certainly the legacy or the core foundation of every single business at NBC Universal. So once we decided that we were locked on uh, into the launching this innovation project, it was really because we were so focused on where and sure of where the consumer was going next. So with that focus, everyone kind of, you know, laid down their territory guidelines and said, we're in it, we're going to launch on time. And imagine in with COVID that we launched on time because we have a singular focus of where the whole business is going. And that now Peacock experience will inform all of our linear evolution as well. It is mm -hmm. in motion. Yeah. So I want to pull back because um, I said in the researching, you know, for this conversation, I got the chance to read a several of your memos uh, that, are, that, that are they're almost like, you know, public op eds, if you will. Um, and you wrote one open letter uh, to sort of to the industry, the media and marketing industry. I'm just going to read a couple sentences from it, uh, and I want you to respond. We now, and I'm quoting, all have a shared responsibility to transform our company's industry and our economy because when everything is at stake, we are all stakeholders, and there's no industry better suited to lead than the marketing community. Can you unpack that a little bit? Why is the marketing community so important to lead at this moment? You know, the uh, market, and thank you, that was, you know, literally the, the heart center of my op-ed that actually I was so excited to write because I really believe that the marketing community, if you could imagine, the marketing community is horizontal and sits across every single business sector. 
right? So if it sits across every business, uh, uh, business sector, we are all in this together, whether it is the health crisis, we are all fighting a common enemy, or it is the cultural issues that we are all fighting together. And if marketing's job is to inspire emotion and inspire consumers into action, what a great call to service that is for marketers across this country, across the world, to lock arms together, to mobilize a change in conversation and mobilize consumer action in service to, think about it, we're able to, to create an emotion, you create action. Action creates sales. Sales, and I think Mark touched on this, sales creates jobs. And when jobs are created, you are there for jump-starting the economy. And what a great call to action that is. But I would be remiss if I didn't talk about, and it was about two years ago, so maybe it was a little, you know, future telling at the time, over 180 companies signed a pledge where they believed that the service to their employees, service to consumers was greater than a balance sheet. And maybe, just maybe, there was a little foresight to these moments that now is the time to change that cultural conversation together. And honestly, we at NBC Universal, Comcast, Sky, together all our brands, uh, we take that and wear that opportunity or obligation as a badge of honor. Because if we can mobilize citizens all over the world to act, then we do that with great integrity, trust, transparency, to make sure that we're all in this together and we should lean in and make those changes that are so necessary. It may sound ambitious, but I think coming out of the last four or five months we've all been through globally, it's a great opportunity to act. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I look forward to seeing that action. And there's so much to talk with you about but we're getting short on time. And there's something that I really want to make sure we get to because, well, you know, these have been incredibly trying times and we don't, we want to honor them. There's also a bit of fun to be had. And particularly when it comes, you know, to a, a company like yours, you have a big event tomorrow night, I think it is, unless I got that wrong and it's tonight. Um, <clears throat> but I think it's tomorrow night. One of my favorite shows is getting back together. Um, and as I understand it, you brought us a little preview of it. Can you set it up? Oh, I certainly did. So you are right. Our big event starts tomorrow night. Uh, it starts tomorrow night on NBC. In some areas, it will then uh, go across all of our cable networks on Friday and on Peacock on Friday as well. So what we actually did, and certainly as a, a result of the last bunch of months, when we couldn't have our traditional, dare I use that word, um, at today's conference, our traditional upfront at Radio City, we thought, how could we lean in, lean in and completely transform the upfront forever? And tomorrow night will be the night when we asked the great Tina Fey and her writing partner, Robert Carlock, to reimagine that upfront experience and would they bring for one special reunion show, 30 Rock back and bring the upfront simultaneously to you all our marketing partners, but also to the all Americans and all audiences to watch it with us. So we're so excited that everyone gets to see 30 Rock and a lot of our future um, shows that we have coming up. And I'll tell you, I may have seen a preview of the show. It is hilarious. And we made a special uh, video for all of you today to get a little taste of what you'll be about to see um, tomorrow night. All right. A special so preview. I think we can roll the video. Let's see it. Hello? Did you get my muffins lemon? Mm, they're so good. What fancy place are they from? The Jacques Ennuyé. Am I tasting pear and bacon? I don't know what's already in your mouth, Lemon, but listen. Kenneth Parcell emailed me today. Oh, why? Is he having another one of those Zoop Zorp virtual cocktail parties where everyone talks at the same time and the camera makes me look like Weird Al? No, he wants to reboot TGS for Peacock. It's NBC's amazing new streaming platform where all of NBC's hit comedies from the past 93 years will be available. Wow, even Friends? Ah, how did you slap me? 
I have the iPhone 40. Now, you do know that Kenneth Parcell is the chairman of all of NBC Universal, right? I guess I kind of remember that. You're the next president of the National Broadcasting Company. It's a very big deal. Kenneth is presenting all of NBC Universal's new content to advertisers tomorrow. The stakes have literally never been higher. He's got to sell a full year of ads in one meeting. Thank God it's him. And thank God advertisers are some of the smartest and most physically attractive people this industry has ever seen. <laughs> Linda, thank you so much for bringing that, giving us a little levity in the program. Uh, best of luck tomorrow night and today through the launch of Peacock and with everything. Appreciate you being here. Looking forward to seeing you in future signals. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll be uh, hanging on every word for the rest of the conference all day tomorrow as well. So thanks so all much. Right.